Well, earlier today, I recorded my first live stream of a live stream, and uh, I, I uh, did a pretty good job. At the end, I was muted, and the whole time that I was doing it, I was hearing like a delay or an echo. It wasn't even a, it wasn't an echo, it was an actual delay. So it was really hard for me to keep track, but um, I thought I would make a video out of the live stream just to make it simpler. Plus the fact that uh, after the live stream was over, somehow I was muted, even though I unmuted myself. Um, I should not have been muted. So people did not have a chance to hear my closing comments. So anyway, enjoy the live stream and uh, the court thing. Uh, that I did on uh, Jennifer Crumbly's case. I'm going to start out by talking and giving a little bit of my information about the case and just getting uh, my chatters in there as we were waiting for law and crime or Detroit uh, local stations to to air it. And then once the uh, once the trial begins, uh, having mostly not vocal uh, stuff come out, but but some chatting stuff. So, so, so do, um, refer back to the live stream. If you want to look at the chat, uh, I think that would be really helpful. I'm keeping the live stream up, even though, you know, it's not perfect, but I think this video, uh, may be, may be helpful for you to understand some of the psychological issues of thinking, feeling, and behaving that go on in this case. slaughter faces twist in pain a stupid alibi might just clear the guy who rides a crazy train This world's gone crazy Things are spinning round and round Well, someday, maybe We'll calm our chaos down child is gone, the last seen on the lawn of the second street in Maine. Mom cut all the ties with all those stupid guys, but it was all in vain. This world's gone crazy, things are spinning round. Well, someday, maybe, we'll calm our chaos down. Someone lost control while he was on parole. He drove through that parade. Family start to cry, seeing him on trial and acting so insane. 
this world's gone crazy. Things are spinning round and round. Well, someday, maybe, we'll calm our chaos down. Four kids in Idaho, white car on the go, and Internet explodes. Cops and sleuths and clowns and suits, and they all think they know. This world's gone crazy. Things are spinning round and round. Well, someday, maybe, we'll calm our chaos down. Well, here I am. You got to get up pretty early in the morning uh, to get your chaos calmed, I guess. Um, for those of you who are out there this early in the morning, my gosh. So I'm in Washington State. It is 6.08 and there's a rhyme. As you can see, I'm a musician as well as a licensed psychotherapist here. There are my instruments in the background. Uh, welcome for all of you who are listening. I uh, really thought it was important after um, Friday's uh, trial to try and at least do this. Um, I know I've seen a lot of law tube channels or people who are lawyers go and uh, live stream these court cases that are really important. And today we're talking about the one uh, for Jennifer Crumbly. The prosecution has brought forth a case uh, because her son, Ethan Crumbly, and that's the only time I'll be mentioning his name, therefore he's going to be referred to as the shooter, uh, uh, did a mass killing at Oxford uh, High School in Michigan, uh, killing uh, four of his uh, classmates and injuring uh, several more and uh, teachers uh, as well. Uh, I want to first say, um, uh, just pay homage to the victims. That's Madison Baldwin, uh, Tate Meyer, Hannah St. Juliana and Justin Schilling, um, who all died in this uh, mass mass shooting here at Oxford High. And pardon me if I um, am a little bit awkward at this because I don't do live streams that often. And, um, and then I'm also going to be when Law and Crime or Channel 2 uh, actually airs the um, uh, the footage from the courtroom. I'll be switching over to that. I really have preferred to watch Channel 2 in Detroit because that's where I've been watching all the coverage of this case. They have a lot better camera angles, but looks like law and crime is already at least up uh, and running. Uh, so I'll check to see if Channel 2 is also up and running. But So my eyes might be darting around a little bit on the screen. Uh, forgive me for that. Uh, so it, for those of you who don't know the background of the case then, so there was a mass shooting. Uh, this was back in November of uh, 2021, and uh, the shooter was uh, 17, or 15 at the time. And, and uh, so what this case is about is the parents of the shooter. And actually, the parents are going to be going through their separate trials. Uh, so right now is, is the mother, and her name is Jennifer Crumbly. And the prosecution is bringing forth a case against uh, the parents because they felt that, A, they knew that their son had mental illness and or signs of mental illness, uh, B, bought him a firearm, um, knowing uh, that information. And, um, and so the, and, and they also knew that he was very proficient at it. So, uh, day one, so we're on day three today. Day one was basically establishing that there was indeed a firearm uh, purchased and that the shooter knew how to operate uh, the gun. And so all of it was about, and it was also, uh, actually it started out with uh, two of the victims from from Oxford, a teacher who actually got shot in her shoulder and the assistant principal who stayed with one of the 
the victims, uh, Tate Meyer, uh, up until he died in, in her arms, I think. Uh, so uh, pretty powerful, very emotional testimony. And then we had our ATF um, uh, alcohol, alcohol, tobacco and firearms agent, uh, gun expert, basically, is what I call him. Uh, come on. And uh, and he was talking about uh, the specifics of guns on day one. Uh, day two is where it started to get a little bit more wild because they started talking a little bit more about the mental health issues. Uh, there was only one witness on the stand and he was the forensic uh, expert on all of the text messages, all of the Facebook uh, messenger, Instagram posts. He was the tech guy who knew everything uh, about all of this stuff. And so uh, what was going on day two was mainly the direct examination of all of these. I mean, it was just just tons of text messages. And, uh, and then the defense brought up uh, her argument uh, as well uh, and brought, I thought, a pretty good argument about reasonable doubt. Now, she was very uh, emotional. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen uh, the end of day two or even day two of that trial is very painful and hard to get through. Um, I was able to do it by Friday night. Um, and then there was nobody around to talk to about it. Nobody was commenting on it because I think everybody had kind of given up on it by that time. But what I'm here to do today is to um, help identify any mental health issues or psychological issues. And when we talk about psych psychology, it's going to be what you're thinking, how you're feeling and what you're doing, and you know, so how you're behaving. And what we, what we typically see in a courtroom is going to be behavior. And uh, courtroom behavior is very interesting in this case, or did get very interesting by the end of uh, the day, the court day on Friday. And uh, again, it's like this crescendo of emotion. Plus, there's the victims' families in in the audience, uh, and uh, and uh, very emotional there. But you, one would expect that the professionals, which would be the judge, the uh, prosecution attorneys, and the defense attorneys, would keep it together emotionally. Um, on day one, I might mention there was uh, audible sobbing from the defense table when they did show um, video footage uh, without audio. Uh, you know, when they're talking about uh, actually seeing the shooting taking place. And um, and uh, they were, the defense was admonished for uh, her excessive outbursts of emotions. I don't know, she, she wasn't really admonished. I think she was just, you know, warned that that would uh, possibly sway the jury into um, thinking a certain way or feeling a certain way. Uh, but she, she acted sincere that they were actual tears. Holy crap, I've actually got some comments. Let me flip over to YouTube here. I see. Oh, hey, Rabbit. <laughs> oh, it's Scotty Detroit. And oh my gosh, I got three. This is the most people I've had in my chat in so long. Hi. <laughs> I know I'm up at six o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Scotty Detroit is my uh, brother in law, and his mother, my mother in law, is a huge fan of this, uh, this case. We have been texting back and forth since 2021 uh, about it. So. And uh, Jeanette's a good friend of mine from um, Land Speculation Channel Discord, and Rabbit Dog is also my. I'm so glad I have two mods here because you know Jeanette really needs to be kept in her place. She she's known to misbehave. <laughs> I should just make Jeanette a mod just because. Oh, and I just have all mods on my channel, and no, actually, there's usually no no uh, no problem at all uh, keeping anybody in line in my channel anymore. Uh, so. Uh, but where was I going? Psychology, thinking, feeling, and doing. And so, yeah, so there was behavior you actually could see. There was audible sobbing. That's behavior. So there's some psychology behind that, right? Um, and uh, so on the second uh, day of the second trial, there was some uh, talk uh, in, in particular and interruptions. That's a behavior that I saw from the defense attorney and um, interrupting. That's another behavior. And it got really, really bad toward the end. I mean, as far as the um, number of incidents that I saw and the intensity of it. And um, I really think that the prosecution kept their cool. And uh, when the defense attorney, uh, Shannon Smith, uh, was interrupting 
uh, them. They they were asking her to hold back. They were asking her to uh, please let them finish and stuff. So I am very, very curious to see uh, what is going to happen uh, today in, in this. Uh, and when they get it started, um, all I see on Law and Crime is Judge Cheryl... M. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen. There's no sound here because I'm actually listening through my phone. If anybody has any questions about this uh, this case that they want to ask me, I'd be happy to try and answer it because, yeah, nothing is going on yet on law and crime. Oh, yeah, I was going to try and find it on Detroit. Let me mute myself for just a second. Detroit 2 is where I prefer to watch it because they've got better better camera angles in there. So I will definitely try, but this is new for me. Uh, I've never done a live reaction uh, video before, so it's going to be, um, and I can only really do it for a couple of hours. That's going to be the most I can be on here because I got a supervision session. I got to uh, get to at nine and a cat. I got to feed it probably again by eight. So this should be fun when it starts. So let me see if I can find it on Detroit too. Um, yeah, so this happened in uh, no on November 30th, 2021. This was, uh, so he the actual uh, gun was a Sig Sauer nine millimeter that was purchased on the 26th of November. So, uh, you know, really only four days, six, four, am I doing my mouth right? It's pretty early. Uh, yeah, that Friday and then the shooting happened um, later on in that week, less than a week later. So they bought it the day after Thanksgiving and the shooting happened that very next week after the parents had been warned that there were some concerning things uh, with the shooter. Um, for example, looking up ammunition uh, in on his phone at school. And so they gave the parents a call, a voicemail about that concern it really wasn't taken too seriously at that point. Uh, they even played the, the recording of that voicemail message and the lady given the, the voicemail message just didn't seem to be, they said that there was just a concern about this. But what really was the big deal was on the day of the shooting, he was drawing all these images of guns and shooting people and help me and blood and on his math, uh, math quiz. And so a teacher got concerned turned it into the school counselor who promptly called the parents in for a meeting uh, that, that day. So in that morning, both the parents came in to the meeting with the school counselor and the shooter. And the shooter had his backpack with them because they, don't, they didn't use lockers in, in those days because it was right after COVID. So they didn't use any lockers. They had to wear backpacks to cart their books around. Uh, and so they had this meeting and it lasted 12 minutes. Uh, with the shooter's parents and the shooter. And um, it, apparently in that meeting, uh, the counselor had said that there was um, a stipulation of he, the shooter needed to receive mental health counseling uh, within the next 48 hours, I believe, and then gave the parents the choice about whether to let their son go back into the school or uh, go home with them. The parents elected to have him uh, stay at school, and the counselor failed to search the backpack, which did contain a firearm. Also, parents did not, they did not notify the, um, I think that they did notify the school that, that uh, the shooter knew how to shoot and had been to the gun range with the mom, and, uh, but they did not let the school know that uh, the shooter actually had a gun, because that gun was purchased on Black Friday, it was purchased for uh, for the shooter, uh, especially for the shooter. So uh, what, and that's not illegal. Uh, in, and this is in the state of Michigan, is also not illegal to not lock up firearms either. And so um, really, as far as legalities, I'm not here to comment on that. I'm just here to see what happens in this courtroom, baby, because it got really wild on Friday. So, um, so yeah, uh, I think that's really all of the other background. If if anybody has any questions, let me know. But otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can get this on Detroit too. Um, I was thinking it would start late uh, anyway, because uh, the way it ended Friday was, again, just really wild. 
And I'm sure that before they start to air it, um, there's going to be a lot of arguing going on between the um, the prosecution, defense, and and judge in this case. And uh, they didn't. They told the jury not to arrive until nine. Um, yeah. Well, it's past nine. <laughs> So the jury's already there, but they may not be in the courtroom because the courtroom is just is definitely not airing. So let me look it up this way. Detroit 2. Okay, okay, it looks like it's so annoying. I think it's annoying when um, and I don't do this on my channel personally, but when, when they have, um, you just click on a channel and it's just like this Taylor Swift song or this music or something. I'm just like, oh my gosh, just it, sometimes it scares me. So Detroit 2 does not have it on yet. They probably wait till the very last moment here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and keep that up there. And I'm going to share my screen and... Um, we're gonna go ahead and wait. Is this is this it? Let's just see what, what this is here. We're gonna go ahead and did I just wait, share this, it or not? No, it. I did not. Let's just see. Wait, what, maybe what it this is. is here. Yes. No, I'm sharing myself. Oh, one way we're gonna go do ahead. This. And... Okay, I gotta stop sharing. All right, hold on. Judge, you can just take your break for as long as you need because Tracy's still trying to figure things out. I just shared my YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just shared my YouTube channel. What a doof. Okay. Um, let's try that again. If I do the same thing again, forgive me, guys. I'm just doing the best I can here. This is Watch Live. Yeah, I should have shared Watch Live. Okay, there we go. So that should work. Oh, my gosh. It's sharing all the chat, too. There's so much chat in these um, crime channels. Um, so... Forgive me for that, but this is, well, wait, I, maybe I could just hold on. I'll, I'll try and work with that because I don't particularly want to watch their chat. I'm just gonna, how do I, I know there's a way to just like compress the chat. Oh, hide chat. There we go. Uh, I wonder if I can also make it big screen here. Yeah. Look at me being all technical. Now I've got everything the way I want it. Woohoo. Let's see if the judge ever comes on. Oh, and I have to make sure when I share my screen that I'm sharing sharing the, um, am I still sharing the screen? Let's see. I don't have to do the whole thing over again. I have to share the audio. Also share audio is on. Okay, yeah. So what you'll see is a big, Google screen, but when the audio comes on, the audio will be on. So I did it. I did it. All right. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Uh, top chat. I'm just going to go ahead and change that to live chat so I can get everybody, all of you three. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe this. Okay. Uh, Jeanette's like, no, she doesn't want to be a mod for my chat. Aw, Jeanette. It's not that bad. I, I hardly ever go live. Uh, she might be saying no to something else, but um, all right. Um, Rabid says, did you mention the prosecutor lost it a bit? No, it was not the prosecutor. It was the defense attorney, Shannon Smith. Uh, and, and it wasn't a bit. Uh, it was a lot. And um, yeah, she remember, um, and this is about behavior again in psychology. So I don't know what she was thinking except for what words were coming out of her mouth uh, and how often she was interrupting. But this was, um, you know, throughout her cross exam, but especially when uh, after the jury had left, thank goodness, uh, the prosecution had brought up a couple of concerns and uh, she kept uh, the defense attorney, Shannon Smith, continued to uh, escalate in her emotional um, uh Anyway, if, if anyone remembers Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, Veruca Salt, um, again, this is behavior, this is acting, this is the way she acted. You watch 
Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the scene with Veruca Salt. And that is exactly what I saw at the end of the day. So uh, to answer Rabbit's question, it was the defense attorney, Shannon Smith. Uh, if you are interested at all, uh, check out day two of the trial. Probably only really need to watch the last, <laughs> either the first 40 minutes of that day or the last 40 minutes of that day. Crazy. That's why I started the um, the live stream with that song uh, that I wrote about true crime. Uh, this world's gone crazy, and uh, we could just substitute court. Uh, this court's gone crazy. Things were spinning round and round that day. That's for sure. And then, okay, uh, so Scotty, um, yes, the mother did take him to a gun range, and uh, they've got they actually did air the footage. I believe that was on day one because they were talking about all the gun stuff. They had the ATF guy there, and they uh, actually have cameras all over these gun ranges. They have it at the front counter, in the hallways, when you go into the room, when you're at the range. They were showing all that video of, of that. And yes, the mother, uh, previously the uh, father had taken him to a gun range to shoot a different gun before they had bought the SIG. And uh, they had two other guns in the home. I know one was a 22 caliber, and then there was another larger gun. I don't know guns at all, but it, so they had, when they got the SIG, then that was their third gun that they had in the house. So Scotty likes watching old videos of Tyler Ted versus Heard. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. Uh, this is worse. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is. Um, uh, but it's not on the um, it, it's not on the witness end or uh, anything. It's it's on the the uh, the attorney's end on the defense side. The thing I want to I want to say about Shannon Smith is that she's making really uh, valid arguments. Um, what she's saying is that you can't definitively prove that the parents were aware of. Uh, mental health issues because they hadn't gotten them officially diagnosed and you can't definitively prove that they didn't have a conversation with him uh, about, you know, because he had said something about hearing voices and seeing things flying off the shelves of his house. The shooter was saying all this stuff in text messages to his parents. But you can't definitively say whether or not the parents didn't have a conversation that we can't document, you know, with Facebook Messenger or um or, uh, you know, just text messages, um, even uh, email, they, they uh, seized the people's Google accounts, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that was that. Was that. So, uh, so Depp v. Heard definitely was interesting. And um, yeah, if you want, um, you, you already you probably know enough about this case, Scott, to uh, be able to watch, um, just thumb through day two. Um, it says everyone is a lawyer. Yeah, that's, I do not, I do not claim to be a lawyer, although it would be interesting to be, uh, be one. Uh, the only problem I have with, with Smith is her interrupting, her arguing with the judge, uh, the judge making a ruling and she's continuing to argue with her and almost stomping her foot, like again, Veruca Salt in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And, um, uh, saying she's doing the best with what she has. Uh, she did have a quite a big stack of paper at one point in time, kind of reminding me of the Daryl Brooks trial when he was hiding behind all those boxes. And uh, and she had it, and the judge called it the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Could you please remove that? I would hate to see it fall down and have you have to organize that when you could be enjoying your weekend, is what the judge said, which I thought was kind of funny, but, um, you know. Uh, anything else I could say? Yeah, they're really taking their time getting on to law and crime. Um, I'm trying to think of any other highlights I can think of for for day for day two or day one. Um, oh well, the judge. Um, now that I'm talking about the judge, Cheryl M. <laughs> I don't I don't know what her name is. I do know that the um, prosecutor table has a a female and a male. Karen McDonald is the female. I don't know what the male guy's name is, but I'm telling you what, he he's fantastic. He keeps his cool. And when Veruca, oh gosh, I can't believe I just asked, called her Veruca. When Shannon Smith 
uh, starts to interrupt. He says, wait a minute. And she stops. So whatever tone of voice he has is effective on her. So um, kudos to him. So we got two people on that table. And then we've got um, three people at the uh, defense table, one of them being um, Shannon Smith, who's doing all of it. She's basically, and, and I feel kind of bad because I think she doesn't have another attorney to juggle the cross exams and the, you know, she's at this point only doing the cross exams because she's defense. Um, and then in the middle is, uh, is Jennifer Crumbly. And then on the side, I am not sure who that ginger guy is. Uh, he uh, is, doesn't hardly say anything, looks very professional, kind of does some help moving some stuff around. And also you can see him touching um, Jennifer on the shoulder. I think he must be a paralegal or some kind of legal person um, in, in the office uh, uh, somewhere. But the judge, um, the judge, you know, she is more like a counselor type of thing. You could even hear her sort of like using counselor skills. Again, this is about psychology and behavior and the way she was behaving. And she had this counselory voice to her. And she was um, even sort of trying, like, it's almost like a mother would console a child and or um, also being very soft-spoken. And she never said overruled or sustained the whole time, which I found very interesting. What she did instead was she was, uh, if, if a person, I didn't even really hear objections. All I, I, all I heard was interruptions. And she just, uh, Shannon Smith would just say, I'm sorry, but blah, 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 blah. There was no objection. And then there was no a reason, you know, like you would see in a typical court trial. Uh, but this judge would, um, when when Shannon Smith would do that, this judge would behave in a way to where it's like, okay, I, I see what you're saying, and this evidence was blah, 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 blah. She would just answer the question, and then maybe the prosecution would say something, and then Shannon would say something else, and there would be this little argument back and forth. And that it was like a counseling session, um, actually, uh, where the now that I think about it um, as I'm talking about it, um, the where the prosecution uh, was the parent uh, in a family session. These were the parents, and um, Shannon Smith was the child, and the judge was the actual mental health counselor. I mean, at, it actually looked like that. Um, so, if again, if you haven't seen any part of this, uh, I'm trying to describe to you as best I can uh, what was going on. Uh, but the judge finally, at the very end of the day, said, I've had it. We need to stop. We need to all take a breath and we need to all go home. And in my opinion, I think that's what needed to happen sooner in the trial rather than later. And that's an, another, another reason why I'm on here is to see how the judge acts today and to possibly comment on the psychology of that. I'm not one of those well, I've never done this before, but I don't want to be one of those people who constantly interrupt. And I try, I would try to find pockets of places to comment since this is going to be a live stream. I hope it will come up someday. <laughs> so, um, uh, so it'll be more observing behavior and I might be in the chat for a little while um, if I have a thought about behavior. Um, because I don't like people missing any of the, the dialogue. Uh, can you guys tell I've listened to a lot of true crime? Um, just for giggles, I'm going to pull up, because um, I don't have it on my law and crime. I, I do have it on my phone. Uh, some of the chat here. Oh, I think it might be coming up. Oh, wait, maybe not. I'm just kind of trying to figure out if anybody has the skinny on when this is going to start. I mean, I could. Yeah. Okay. Nothing's happening here. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, Fox 2. Oh, I guess Fox 2 is up. Let me look. Yeah, I do prefer Fox 2, actually. It's right from Detroit. 
Oh, it is. Okay, let me see if I can try and switch there. Okay, all right. Let's get rid of law and crime and stop sharing the screen. So now it's just me. I'm gonna go ahead and try and share the other screen instead. No, I don't want that one. This is the one I wanna share. Let's see if that works. All right, now I gotta get rid of the chat like I did last time. How did I do that? Oh, am I gonna have to do this over again? That's okay. I don't think there's anything really happening here. Hi, chat. And big screen. Oh my goodness. I'm impressing the pants off of myself. Oh my goodness, how am I even doing this? Can you guys hear? Um, put a one in the chat, you guys, if you could, if you can hear the kind of court noises in the background. And I don't know how to control my volume on my end. There's Mr. Smith right there in the red, putting on her lip gloss. And um, God, do I sound sarcastic? I should not be, but um, but yeah, if somebody can let me know if you can hear it. Thanks, Scott. Um, your poor brother is taking it, the lions pretty hard. Um, yeah, uh, we're all super depressed here today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's and it is interesting too because this is being uh, this is in Oxford, Mich Michigan, and. Um, and so they're, they're coming on, on the heels of a lion's loss, um, these poor people. Um, I don't know who that is talking to Ms. Smith. Ms. Smith is again, the one in the, um, in the background there uh, wearing kind of a red, kind of a, or a salmon colored jacket. And I do not see Jennifer Crumbly but they did, I know she's there because they showed her her side of her face earlier. So, exciting stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I promise to keep my behavior. Oh, what did I do? Did I just, oh no, I just shut down everything. What did I just do? Okay, I'll get it back. I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything going on anyway. I'm fairly confident I'll be able to get it back here. Oh, there's starting to be sounds. There's sounds. Yeah. Can you see it now? Calling people versus Jennifer Crumbly, case number 222279 Thank you, Marquise. Thank you. I'm Shannon Smith on behalf of Jennifer Crumbly. She's on her way up. Thank you. I get it. I get it. I probably just bought it. I know. I'm telling you, I just bought it with me. I'm at my desk. Um, anything she's on her way up. Sorry, Jeanette, this is as high as I can go. Um, is, are there some things you wanted to put on the record before the jury comes in? I, I believe so, Your Honor. We had a, we had a discussion up off the record uh, to plan our uh, going forward here. So um, I think there was a few things we resolved 
Uh, oh, I know. One of the things is the uh, uh, Facebook. That's what I was going to address. But do you do you want to do that outside the presence of the jury or in front of the jury? Oh no, I actually think we should do it in front of the jury. Okay, I, I, that's I agree. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's all needs is water client. I think that should happen outside of the Right. Oh, okay, that's right. This is from. Could you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony about the guilt is the truth? I guess. And can you tell me your name? Jennifer Crumbly. Okay, we, we just have a few questions for you. Okay. Okay, Mrs. Crumbly, when we were in court on Friday, um, there was discussion about admitting the Facebook Messenger messages between yourself and James Crumbly. Correct. Do you recall that? Yes. And on Saturday. I came over to the jail to see you, and that was specifically a topic we discussed. Yes. Okay, and at this time, um, we have talked about how during the trial, there was talk about re redacting portions of that Facebook Messenger thread um, pursuant to other orders, correct? Right. And the court offered me the opportunity to redact portions of that record. Correct. And after you and I discussed it, it's fair to say that uh, you and I believe that it would look like we are hiding um, evidence from the jury if they saw a redacted version of Exhibit 423, correct? Correct. Okay, please don't finish speaking before you start. Okay, so at this time, I have let the court know that we are not moving for any redactions and that Exhibit 423 will be admitted um, showing your entire phone conversation with James on Facebook Messenger. And, Your Honor, there's specific dates it's from, so I think I should put the dates on the record. Yeah, it might be on the... Let me just grab it. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the exhibit. It wasn't with the initial uh, folder I had. Do you know the dates? January 21. Okay, so there are the... It's yeah, the, early 2021. It's the entire... Facebook messenger thread between you and Mr. Crumbly starting in January of 2021, and it goes up through um, the events that lead us here today. Correct. Okay. Is it your decision to allow those Facebook messages to be admitted through in the court without redaction? Yes. And you and I have talked about the pros and cons of redacting those exhibits. Correct. And at this time, you understand they will be admitted without any redactions. I do. And just a few. Sure. This is Kremlin. You understand that Exhibit 423 won't just be given to the jury, but the prosecution can go through that with either you on a cross examination or with other witnesses. Correct. And you consulted with your attorney specifically about that point? Yes. And it is your decision. As a defendant in the case, in consultation with your attorney as part of trial strategy to admit this entire exhibit? Yes. Um, and to be clear, this is the Facebook message thread mm -hmm. between Jennifer and James Crumley beginning January 1, 2021. It's over 2,000 pages long. Exhibit 423. And Mrs. Crumley, you understand that throughout the pendency of this case, your attorney on your behalf has sought to exclude certain themes or topics of evidence, in some cases successfully, yeah, this Facebook conversation does touch upon some of those. I understand. And you still want 423 to be admitted into the evidence and referenced by the prosecution and defense. Yes. I'm satisfied. All right. Anything else that has to be out of the presence of the jury at the moment? Um, we're dealing with uh, your other. We're going to deal with your other the other issue that you brought up about the snow. Snow. About the. Oh night. yes. Okay. But, okay. We'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. What else? All right, we're going to bring the jury in, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Only 45 minutes late, you know, not, not too bad. Okay, thanks, Scott. Love you.
So we don't know who the first witness is going to be. I don't think they've told us yet. Good morning, you may be seated. Thank you again for being kind of, we weren't ignoring you, we were just sort of paving the way. So um, every day requires some certain preparation, so we appreciate you. And who's the next witness? Ms. Kira Pack. Your oh. Honor, I'm sorry, before, can, may I please address the court? Sure. Okay, Your Honor, on uh, Friday, I think it was very clear beyond a reasonable doubt, I have difficulty and cannot use technology. Um, in my frustration, I made a comment that was offensive to victims, victims' families, and I did it absolutely by accident um, as I was struggling with my computer. I am apologizing for that comment. I want to apologize to the jurors, to the audience, to all involved, and specifically to the victims and the families of the victims. I truly did not mean to say the comment I made. I believe that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Do you, do you want to approach just for a second? I'm, I'm supposed to ask the camera person to cut them up. Yeah. They need to. Not sure what's going on here. Oh, they, okay. So they're just switching the camera angle because of the approach. I wonder if uh, she's getting a bit of a talking to right now because she said it in front of the jury guys. I mean, I don't know, Rabid, you can let me know what you think if you're still in the chat. Good morning. Could you raise your hand? Yes. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about the evidence that proves to help you back? I do. All right, could you be seated? And then would you state your name for the record and spell your first and last name, please? My name is Kira Pennock, K I R A P E N N O C K. Thank you. Go ahead, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Kira, can you tell the jury how old you are? I am 27. Okay. And you actually have a, a pretty robust um, career at 27. Can you tell the jury what you did? I uh, own and run a horse farm. We do boarding and lessons and training. And how long have you been owning and, and running the farm? Since May of 21. Okay. Uh, you said for the for the people and, and the jury or um, counsel, explain what a horse farm actually does. You said boarding and riding lessons, but what does that actually mean? Um, so people will own horses and um, they don't always have the means to uh, have them at their house. So they will board them over at my place. So I take care of them. I feed them, I water them, I clean up after them. And uh, then they can come visit their horses whenever they want. Okay. Um, and so the boarding includes feeding and watering the horse. That's all one price. Yes, it also um, includes like cleaning up after them, but I mean, really just any any of the care that they, they might need for just general living. Okay, and how much is the cost of boarding one horse? Um, board at that time was uh, $400 for um, pasture board, so if their horse is outside 24-7 with access to a shelter if they wanted to use it. Okay, 400 per horse. Yes. Okay. Um, what's not included in boarding? Um, vet bills. So if you know the vet has to come out and do something with the horse, um, the farrier, <coughs> so the the person Again, that works out. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. It's basically kind of a pedicure for the horse, so that has to happen for six to eight weeks. Um, but uh, and then also lessons too. Lessons are not included, so those are separate. And how much? Are, how much are lessons? $35. And how much uh, for the vet bills, the, uh, a vet or a farrier? 
Um, it really just depends on um, the horse um, and then like what, what that horse needs. So, um, you know, a horse needs routine vaccination each year and just kind of general checkup. Um, but there are other expenses as for like, you know, emergency vet calls. So if your horse injured themselves or is colicking. And the vet comes to the barn. Yes. Okay. Do you know someone named Jennifer Crumbly? I do. Do you see her in the courtroom today? I do. Can you um, describe something she's bringing to the court? your farm oh, correct all right when about what time year month, month um they started boarding their uh horses which by then they had bought the second horse um they had started boarding i believe in the july time period of um 21. okay who did you know better james or jennifer jennifer all right and um can you describe jennifer's general demeanor when you were working with her and well, back up. Let's, what kind of interactions would you have with Jennifer and what? Um, just talking about the horse that she was boarding or was there anything else that you did um, with Jennifer? A majority of our conversations were related to the horses and maybe talking about goals for the future for possibly showing or just training goals in general to um, figure out the best plan of action for the lessons that I was giving. So did you give her lessons? I did. Okay, how about how, how often would you give her a lesson? Um, I would say between two and three times a week. Okay, and when did that occur? Um, usually in the evenings. So did Jennifer come to the, to the barn um, in the evenings during the weekdays or was it on weekends or both? Um, well, she came in the evenings during the week usually after work, and then um, weekends, um, she would come in the morning, afternoon, and evening, but okay. I can't say for sure the exact time usually. And did you say how many times during the week, the work week? I would say probably at least two to three times during the week. And about, on the average, what time did she arrive? Mm, about 4.35ish. Okay. And stay about how long, do you know? Um couple hours so at least maybe two to three hours and was that just getting lessons or were there other things that she was doing um just getting her horse ready for a lesson and doing the lesson and then cooling the horse down and taking them back out to their pasture um and then just everybody in, at the barn is pretty friendly everybody will talk so just small conversation so the, the boarding and the feeding is just the basic care. Is there a lot more, a lot more things you have to do to take care of a horse um, if you're the owner? Um, the owner uh, pays the barn where the horse is boarded at to do the general care of the horse, like the day to day. Mm -hmm. 
things such as giving them water and grain and hay and cleaning up after them and you know, maybe changing blankets and different things to make sure that they they stay warm. Um, so there's um there's a <coughs> an exhibit which includes the Facebook messages between Jennifer and James. That were they both taking care of the horses? And the reason I ask is there seems to be a lot of communication between the two of them about taking care of the horses. So I'm trying to get at what else would they be doing other than just feeding the horse and you said pulling it off and taking it. I'm not a, a horse person, so um, taking it out to pasture and does it have to be, do you have to ride your horses? Like what, what's the responsibility there? Um, most likely what they might be talking about is maybe some of the vet care. So I know one of their horses had what's called mud fever, kind of a fungus stuff that might grow on the legs of a horse with wet weather. Um, and that usually is something that ends up needing a vet to intervene with just medication to help take care of it. So it might be related to maybe the vet, vet bills. Okay. Maybe just that appointments related to taking care of the horses. Okay. And you said they own two horses. What are their names? Uh, one is named Billy and one is named Shorty. Okay. What kind of horses were they in terms of value of the horses? There, I, I, I'm, I know horses can be very expensive to purchase. Was where do, where do these horses fall on that continuum? Uh, well, they were both thoroughbred, so they, they raced on the racetrack before they had gotten them. Um, but I do not know how much Shorty was purchased for. Um, I believe that um, Billy was purchased around like $5,000. Okay. And how do you know how much Billy was? Um, she was sending me, or Jennifer was sending me, um, information on him when she was looking for a horse. Okay. And do you know anything about the circumstances of when she or how she bought that horse? Um, I know that she was talking about it late at night and um, she was also drinking. Okay. How do the people that board your horses and, and have lessons, um, give, give lessons, how do they pay, pay you? Your Honor, I need to make an objection. The, the witness was Shocker. in part non-responsive, and I, I guess we struck from the record. Yeah, it was, I think it was, uh, and unless there's follow-up, I think it was somewhat unresponsive. Uh, the Facebook message stream that was just admitted details exactly how the course was purchased, so we can, I, I'm happy to, to move on and, and we'll deal with it then. Um, I don't know, I haven't read this, so. The portion I'm objecting to is the unnecessary information about she was drinking at the time. Okay. I think it's relevant. I think if you're buying a $5,000 hot horse um, while you were drinking late at night is relevant to the case and, and the relationship that Jennifer Crumbly had in her priorities. And, and as well as the fact that the Facebook message uh, string that was just stipulated to an admission without redactions, like it was, Absolutely discusses that. Okay, next question. Okay. Um, how do people pay? Cash, check, credit card? It can be any of those. Um, a lot of people now use online payments like Venmo. Okay. How did the Crumblies pay you for your services? Uh, check. Okay. And did James ever take lessons? I have given him a few lessons. So who was taking the horse, taking care of the horse during the day? Was that, did Jennifer ever come during the day, during the week, or was it, was it James, or did they both? Um, well, the general care every day was done by the barn, um, but say if there was a need to have the vet out, um, we usually like to have the owners present, so um, they, they would usually have one of them at whatever that appointment. Okay. So you just testified you, they moved their horses to your barn July of 2021. You knew them approximately a year before that, two years? Um, they had boarded at the barn that I had my horses boarded at um, prior to buying my farm. Um, 
I do not recall how much time we had boarded together there, um, but I had met them a couple of years prior. To okay, that. that's what I was getting at. Yeah. So you 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 known them a couple of years before they came to your farm. Yes. Okay. Um, did you know that if Jennifer had a son? Uh, yes. And had did you ever meet their son? I may have met him maybe once or twice. Where, if you know where where was that? Was that your barn? It was not at my barn. Okay. Um, did you ever see their son come to your barn? No, I did not. So the two to three times a week and on the weekend when Jennifer would visit, did she bring anybody with her? Usually James. Okay. Um, I don't remember anybody else really coming out and with her. Okay. Do you allow kids at the barn? Yes, we do. And what are the kids that are at the barn usually doing? Um, usually doing lessons, um, you know, some, some of the kids that are doing lessons, they have siblings that are brought out, so they just kind of maybe occupy their time with the barn cats or, um, seeing the other horses on the property. Okay. And do you have any family, um, oriented activities or get togethers? Um, we have, uh, we've had a family reunion. Meaning before, but parties or activities that children are welcome to come to. Yes, all of the um, events that we might have at the farm, um, kids are invited to. Like we've had parties like Halloween party before too. Okay, around Halloween of 2021, do you remember if you had a Halloween party? Yes, we did. Do you know when it was and about what time of day it was? I do not remember what day it was, but I know that it was afternoon, evening-ish. Was it on Halloween or before Halloween? It was before Halloween. Okay. And it was a weekday or weeknight? It was a on a weekend, I believe. A Friday or Saturday? Yes. Okay. Um, did did Jennifer come to that party? Yes. And how do you remember that? Um, I remember that uh, both Jennifer and James they come to the party um, and they were dressed up. Um, and like our, our parties, we include the horses. So people will also dress their horses up for they put Halloween, Halloween costumes on horses. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty fun. Okay. <laughs> and do you know if they dress their horses up that year? Um, not really dressing them up. Um, they wanted to, but they had also said that they had another party to go to after. Okay. After mine. So you did not see their son that night? I did not. Okay. Um, did Jennifer talk to you about her son? Not a ton. Um, but every once in a while she would mention something about him. And what if do you remember things that she would say? Um, usually it was along the lines of um, she was having problems with him or he he wasn't acting normal. He was she had called him weird before. Um, she wanted him to do normal kid things. Okay. Um, but uh, she, I never remember her saying anything about like, you know, really bringing him out to the barn much or really doing much. I mean, they would go on vacations. I did hear about some vacations that they had gone on. Um, but really, there was not much talk about her son. Did she ever refer to him um, as a as a certain name? Did she speak negatively about him, or was it just or positively? There was nothing truly positive um, when she was talking about him. Um, there were quite a few times that um, she had uh, voiced that he was an oopsie baby. What does that mean? Um, I'm sorry. And what did you? What did you? Understand I, that too. Um, I understood it as PR objection as to speculation and also as to relevance. Well, I guess I wonder how it is. I think if you're referring to a, a teenager still as an oopsie baby, I think it's relevant to what kind of um, relationship you had with them and what kind of, um, you know, defense counsels described her client in opening as hyper vigilant. And, um, and so, I think that the prosecution's entitled to, um, to. Well, there, well, I think their relationship was relevant. When you when you say your definition of an oopsie baby, did she, did she, 
Are you using your own definition of what that means or hers? Um, my take on what the feelings that I have gotten that she has um, not really talked your about. Honor, I, you're asking if it's her opinion. I'm sorry, she's going she to did, her I'll, I'll it up. We don't, okay. unfortunately, your feelings about it um, are right. not what's relevant. Correct. Here. But did she ever explain what that meant? Um, she never truly explained what that, that had meant. Okay. How long of a drive is the barn from Oxford, the village of Oxford, if you know? I would say about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, what is the way that you would communicate with Jennifer? Uh, usually through Facebook Messenger. And do you know why that is? Is that your, the way you prefer to communicate? I don't really mind what what way to communicate. Um, it seems like Facebook Messenger is how a lot of people communicate nowadays. Okay, and does the barn have Wi-Fi? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, so do you have problems communicating during, um, when you're at the barn? It depends on how good the service wants to be at the barn. Okay. Um, some days it's really good, and then other days there's not great service. All right. And I would assume most of the people at the barn, that that's just a people deal with that and they know that. Yes. Okay. Um, would you describe Jennifer, did you have a friendship or was it more just business? It was mainly business. Um, we had friendly talk, but I would not say that we were close friends. Did, when you buy a horse and it doesn't, um, it, it's, it's, it's not near where you are. How do you get it from like a different state to the barn? Uh, usually you can pay somebody to haul the horse over to the new location for you, or um, you can go pick it up if you have a trailer. And do you know how, what was the second horse's name that was purchased? Billy. Billy. Do you know how he was brought to the barn? He was shipped by someone that does a lot of, um, cross-country hauling. And do you remember about what month and year that was? Uh, it was in the beginning of the year that she had gotten him, which I do not remember exactly when she had gotten him. Did she get him before she came to your barn or after? Before. Okay. But So how did you know she was, was your relationship like that and before she was at the barn? Before she was at my barn? Yes, your relationship. Um, I would give her some lessons and it was mainly business. And was she asking for advice about which horse to buy or how to buy the horse? Not a lot, but just kind of, um, you know, just general questions of, you know, what, what might work for a good horse for what she wanted to do. Okay. I guess what horse. I'm getting is how do you know how the horse was shipped? Um, because she had told me about um, you know, where, where he was, that he was in a different state and that she would just have him show. Okay. Do you, do you know approximately how much that costs? I do not. It varies on who you use to haul a horse. And then also just, you know, the, the cost of, you know, the fuel and mileage and, you know, everybody kind of has their, their own fees that they more than 500, less than 500. Um, most likely more than 500. Okay. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about the health concerns or issues with the two horses? Do they need a lot of extra care? Um, like, were they given a lot of extra care? Given extra care by the vet? By the crumbies, by Jennifer. Um, they would, um, come out and, uh, like, you know, the, the mud fever that we were dealing with. Um, and they had put medication on, on Billy's legs for that. Um, but uh, there were some issues lameness wise with um, their their newest horse, Billy, that um, they had still had to pass the vet out for to diagnose what the problem was. Were they on any other medications or supplements? Um, supplements, yes. Um, medication, not, not that I know of. What's the cost of supplements for a horse? Um, well, it depends on what, what you want to, 
um, have your horse on. Um, I know that both Billy and Jody were on a lot of supplements and it probably cost over a hundred dollars, probably close to two hundred dollars per month per horse. All right, I'm gonna draw your attention to November 30th, 2021. Do you remember that day? Yes. All right. What was the interaction you had with Jennifer Crumbly uh, the, the day before that? So that, that was a Tuesday. Were you, did you see her at the barn on Monday? I do not remember. I think she was planning on coming out, but I don't remember exactly. Okay, did you have any communication with her that previous weekend? the previous weekend before the 30th? Yes, after Thanksgiving. Yes. And do, do you remember what that was about? Um, I remember wanting to set up lessons. I don't don't remember exactly okay. anything else. In your Facebook communications, um, did Jennifer ever mention going to a, a shooting range that summer or leading up to that fall? Um, she had mentioned that she was going to, um, but I don't really remember a lot of okay. that. That was was that in the summer or the fall? Uh, I would believe summer and, and fall. Okay. Um, Were you aware that she? Um, do you follow her on social media? I do. Did you see the post that she uh, posted about buying her son a neck for Christmas present? I did. All right. Did you discuss it with her? I did not. Did you see it before the shooting or after? I do not remember. I'm on social media, but not very frequent. Okay. Uh, so the morning of November 30th, uh, what was going on with their horses? Um, their horse, Billy, needed uh, the medication from the vet to help treat his mud fever because we couldn't fix it with the products that we were trying before and his legs were swollen. Okay, and what, what was being done about it? Um, there was some ointment that was given to them uh, by the vet to put on his legs. That morning? I believe they picked it up from the vet um, to put on the legs because I remember James wanting to bring the medication out and put it on. Uh, Billy's legs. Okay, so James, did James go to the barn that morning? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, and do you know from like what time to what time? It was in the morning, but I don't recall what time. Okay. And were you having conversations over a Facebook messenger with Jennifer during that time? <coughs> um, not really. Okay. Did you speak with her about this mud fever frequently? I had mentioned it to her because it's, it's not normal for a horse's legs to swell up like his did. Um, it was just a mild case of this mud fever. Um, so we had to have a little bit more involvement of getting that taken care of by having an ointment made by the vet to that um, took care of it. Okay. Um, was Jennifer <coughs> planning on coming to the barn? <coughs> that night? Yes. And can you, do you remember why? Uh, we were going to do a lesson, a riding lesson. Did, did she end up going to that lesson? She did not. Okay. Um, <coughs> there was a text sent at what's, um, including in what's been previously admitted, um, as exhibit 130, Your Honor. Um, can you read the, the top text there and which one's, which one is you? Are you blue or, or black? I am blue. Okay. So can you read the text that you sent at, what does it say? 10, 18 a.m. on the 30th. Yes. Um, boys are needing supplements for tonight and Shori lost a bell boot again. What's a bell boot? Um, it is a, um, it's like a rubber boot that goes over the horse's foot to help um, prevent, uh, well, we used it on Shorty for, because um, he would rip his shoes off all the time. He had metal shoes on 
and he would um, pull his shoes off. So if you put a bell boot on, it helps to reduce the chance of them pulling your shoe. Okay, and you're telling her why? Um, I was telling her to have her bring out another boot to replace the one that he had torn off. So, so it's her responsibility to do that? Correct. Okay. Um, and she responds, can you read that text? Okay, I'll bring some out later. Just had to go to my son's school and meet his counselor. Shit day. All right, so she responds to you in about 20, 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. Like it. Okay. Um, and then is this continued on that same message? It's just another message at the same time? Or yes. was it later? Okay, can you read that? Yeah, I still plan on doing the lesson. Everything's okay. He's just having a hard time after losing Hank, his friend, going away to a treatment facility and who knows what else. But he was just caught drawing. See, this is why I thought they were closer friends, are these text messages here. And this is the worksheet that's been previously submitted, Your Honor. It's Exhibit 74. Um, is there anything for that? Yeah, see, that's, for me, that's something a friend would write to a friend. And I know they had a business arrangement, but I don't know why she would be talking about all that personal stuff if they hadn't been friendly, at least. So um, I think Kira is trying to distance herself probably from Jennifer because she is testifying for the prosecution. And uh, so I might not be around for the cross exam, but um, yeah, there's... Oh, there's that. And then she sent her the picture there. You, you can see they're trying to bring it up on screen of the math uh, test that uh, the shooter had doodled on. You can see the gun. It's really super small, but you can see the gun. And where was that? At a farm right down the road. Do you know if she ever traveled to for competitions or horse shows? Not to my knowledge outside of when I had taken the horse. Oh. May I approach her? So this is exhibit 74. And can you tell the jury what that is? That is the math test that Jennifer had sent me that morning um, of what her son had drawn on the math test. All right, and did you take a look, close look at it when she sent it to you? I did look at it, um, but I did not open it as soon as she had sent it to me. I saw it later. Okay. When, how, how much later? I believe that it was before um, the shooting had occurred. Um, but after the shooting had happened, I had looked at the math test even closer. Okay. So this, this is important. So I want to make sure I ask the question in the right way. You, you did, you know, you took a look at it. Um, and you remember that, is, is there a reason why? I remember saying that he had needed horse therapy. And okay. She should bring him out for some horse therapy. All right, okay, we're gonna get to that. Um, can you just do the next slide? Um, so this is from who, you or Jennifer? Um, this message was from Jennifer. Can you read it please? As long as I can get out there early enough because I had to leave work for an hour, and I have a meeting in Southfield at three o'clock, but I should be done with that by four. I plan on being there. Plus the vet said it's better for him to move around and keep it circulation going while he's dealing with mud fever. Good time. Okay, so the first thing I wanna point out that you received from her about the lesson was 1058. Do you remember? I. I'm sorry, yes, um, 1058. Okay, yeah. and so this is all part of the same conversation? Yeah. All right, and then the next text is from you, correct? Can you read that? Yes. OMG, he needs some horse therapy. I bet he would love Mo. Whatever works for you, just let me know. I only have Bella's lesson tonight at 5.30, so anytime after her lesson is fine. Okay, and her response? Can, can okay. everybody still yeah. hear this? Because well, my echo has gone away. James is working and he can't be left alone.
Next slide. Um, For anyone who's out there, just let me know. And she Put a one in the chat. I don't know. Thumbs up. Maybe brush a small horse. So oh, not. great. I don't have an echo anymore. That was oh. highly annoying. Uh, oh, sorry. I had yeah, the same problem. No, I, I was trying to figure sorry. out if there was more than that. that um, I don't know, maybe brush a small horse so he's not intimidated. LOL. And she responds? I responded, oh. uh, Mo would be perfect. And she responded with, okay. All right, and the next slide. Uh, make it a family event coming out to the barn. Really thought, we really though, I've seen <clears throat> some amazing things done with horses with kids. And at this point, you testified early, you, you hadn't ever seen him come to the barn. Not to my farm, and I vaguely remember maybe seeing him once at the previous farm. A few years prior? Uh, yes. Okay. And her response? Uh, he needs something. And you responded, even though there seems to be a... I can still read it. Okay. Like, let's make him a cowboy. And, and then her response? LOL, mom goals for real. All right. So that exchange ends, and then the next text you get from her Facebook message is at 2.36 p.m. that day. Correct. <clears throat> that says here, I will Okay, not hold on a second. Open. What, um, when did you first hear about the shooting? Um, I had actually heard about the shooting when um, one of my students' moms had called me um, in that afternoon and said that they would not be out later for their lesson because of the shooting. All right, and what was your first thought, Kira? My first thought is that I knew who the shooter was by okay. the mass test that was sent to me. All right, that's a, a heavy thing to, to think. Talk to me about why that was your first thought. Um, it's not normal for somebody to draw these things on a test in school or even really think about these things. Um, especially in a school setting, but really ever. Okay, so did you then go back and, and take another look at the worksheet? Yes. All right, um, did you talk to anybody about this at the time? Um, I had talked to my parents. Um, I had told them that I believed that I knew who the shooter was and I explained why. Okay, um, and at some point your, your father actually called the tip line, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, when did you, verify that it was in fact her son? Around what time, if you know? Um, I do not remember when I had verified that it was her son. Okay, so let's go back to the text message at 2.36, and we know the the shooting started at around 12.51. Uh, so this is a couple, this is an, an almost an hour and a half after the shooting. She texts you what? Kira, I won't be there tonight. And you respond? It's okay. Want me to work Billy for you? And she says? Yes, please. Okay, and talk to me about the next text and the picture. Um, it says, just brought him in, and it's a picture of Billy. All right. Did you text, text her photos or message her photos a lot on the horses? I would send her pictures as I, I took them. I tried to be good about taking pictures of the horses. Okay, and the next slide? This is at 407. I said, hey, is everything okay? I heard there was a shooting at Oxford High School. Is Ethan okay? And then at 421, you sent another text? You if to... you need anything, please let me know. And then under that, uh, oh, no, that's the same. Okay. I'm not sure what's up there. Uh, she responds at 442 and says what? I need to sell my sell my horses stat. And what did you respond to her? I responded with, oh no, this was what I was worried about. Okay, can I stop you there? What did you mean by that? I had the the feeling that, that her son was the shooter and that um, with that the horses would horses would most likely have to be sold. Okay, but it doesn't say that and you're, you came to that conclusion, oh no, this is what I was worried about because of somebody 
information outside of what she actually tested. Correct. Okay. Um, and you say what about the horses? Uh, I said, if you are serious, I will gladly buy Billy for sure. And, and <clears throat> then I asked how much, and she said, I paid 5k for him. Okay. About an hour and a half later, you respond. Oh, uh, no, she, no, 624, you say what? I had said, do you want 5k for him or do you want more? And her response? My head is spinning right now. Is eight too much? And she says? I said, say? I would gladly give you eight if I could afford it. I really only have 5k to spend. You could ask Angela if she would be, if she would buy him for eight. Angela would probably buy him. Okay. Do you buy and sell horses a lot? I do not. Okay. Have you bought a horse from somebody before? I have bought horses before. Okay. Is that something that you normally do via check, cashier's check, cash? It it depends on the situation. You're okay. Um, I was just looking at all of us. Your Honor, there's, it's, uh, this is part of a lot of evidence we're introducing about um, going to flight and the, the need for actual cash. I'm not, I'm not allowed. Thank you. Uh, so at 647, she texts, she messages you again. What does it say? I won't have my cell phone. And you respond? Do what you need to do. I will take good care of your boys here. And the next slide? She says what? I can be reached through here. I do not have my cell phone currently on a track phone. And that is still the 30th, but it's at 10, 21 p.m. Yes. All right, and, and can you read what you responded? Um, do you need me to do anything for you? I'm not sure you should. Yeah, much, much more respectful on Shannon today. So I'm really happy to see that. So prominent in it. So one moment. Okay, this, let's talk about this. Do you know um, where this, these, at some point did the, the law enforcement ask you if you communicated with Jennifer? Um, how do you mean that? At some point, did did um, you give the screenshots of these messages to law enforcement? I think I, maybe okay. the judge had talked um, to so her or something. The problem, these are screenshots. Do you know, is that correct? Yes, they oh. are screenshots. Okay, um, I'm going to approach with the actual paper copy to see if maybe this is a little easier to read. It's just cut off, so I can't read it. Just yeah. Um. Not, not okay, sure. we'll, we'll clear it up because we have a okay. complete, um, but yeah. can you just read what you, you can understand? Um, I, on this next, um, or it says story being uncovered, already seen some stuff on Facebook. People are figuring out what's going on. And she responds? I'm off Facebook. Okay, and the next slide. I'm still in shock. What did Angela post? Okay, so that text that you couldn't read, do you remember, was that about Angela? I do not recall. Okay. Yeah, yeah. definitely and do that, Robin. You respond. Um, I said, can you receive pictures? I'll screenshot it. And she said, yes, I'm here. And then I sent her a screenshot. Do you remember what the screenshot, without reading exactly what it said, what the nature of it was? Um, the the poster had been extremely frustrated and upset about what happened with the shooting. Okay. And were there any um, threats in that screenshot? I do not remember. Okay. We'll pull it up. Um, hold on one second.
Um, all right, so the next uh, time you text her at 1045, can you tell the jury what you said? I cannot believe people on Facebook. I'm so sorry you're having to deal with this stuff. Okay, and because I know this is going to be um, something council wants to talk to you about, can you tell us what was your, what were you feeling at that moment when this was going on about Jennifer and the whole situation? I was extremely upset about the situation. Okay. Can you give me a little more than extremely upset? Um, I didn't really know what, what to think. I couldn't believe that this had happened and especially so close to, you know, home. Um, and I was concerned about what was going to happen in the future. Okay. With, um, just my farm in general. And you at the time were how old? Uh, it was two down. years ago. Two years ago, I was 25. All right. Um, and were you feeling bad for Jennifer? I did not truly feel bad for Jennifer. I was upset that this had happened to all of all of the kids and families, and I wanted to figure out how I could possibly get more information to help make sure that um, things were taken care of. Wow. Are there any students at Oxford that you gave lessons to or were at the bar and what is the community like there? Um, yes, I, I give lessons to a few people from, from Oxford. Okay. Um, all right, the next slide. This is at 11 p.m. that night. Can you read your text? Did you guys leave the medication for Billy's legs? If not, no worries. I'll just put my stuff on him. And she responds, I'll bring by tomorrow. We're in hotel and look here. Lose lives at our house. And you respond, no problem. And then at 1140, you say what? Please stay safe. Okay. Next slide. Uh, this is a screenshot um, that you sent or she sent? She had sent me. Okay. And she responded, I can't go home. Okay. And did you read those? Um, what I could just from the, the screenshot. Okay. Did you view those as threats to her life? I, Your Honor, I would object just to her opinion. Yes. That's fine. Okay. I, the, the text, the screenshot speaks for itself. Um, next slide. Okay, go ahead. I'm concerned for you guys. Um, you should stay. All right, um, while we're getting a, a copy that actually is there, uh, why are you concerned? Um, I, why are you concerned? This my my concern um, was more for the safety of myself and the people at my farm. Um, and here in that concern, I am um, showing sympathy to hopefully figure out um, maybe more information on like, you know, what, what is going to happen if they were going to try to come to my farm or um, if people were going to show up. What was, what was the concern? I, my concern about them coming to the farm um, knowing about the situation that had just happened is that they may steal things to sell to get money to pay for the your honor i would object to this um about her thoughts and feelings about stealing this is irrelevant and prejudicial yeah, she's a fact witness that's what that that question your honor she is most likely going to be asked by counsel to explain that she was worried about her safety. And so I'm asking her what she was really worried about. I, I'm happy to save it up to redirect them. Okay. okay. Um, and then she responds what? I have my pets at home. I'm sorry. I don't want to put anyone at risk. I don't know what to do. Okay. Her pets at home. Did you know anything about her pets? I know that she had a dog at least still, and I think she had a cat. Okay. And this was still the night of the shooting. Yes. The next slide. 
And in fact, this is at 11.59 p.m. after she says, I'm concerned about my pets. What do you respond? Best thing you can do is just be honest about things. I'm not sure. I'm wondering about even buying your horses, if that would drag me into this, or if you just sign them over to me. Okay, and then there's content we have to um, clear up, but can you read the last sentence? Or the two last sentences? Uh, two last sentences. Um, I see people saying you're using money from the horses to get a better lawyer or something. People are ridiculous. All right, next slide. I'm selling my house too. Lawyer will cost every bit of 200,000 and I don't think that, I think it will be questioned. You won't get dragged in. And then I mm -hmm. responded with- um, Safe well, to say you might have been worried it would be called to testify on I Yeah. Okay, what is your- um, Most I can afford to pay is 5K. Barrier is coming out Thursday also. And she responds, that's fine, sold. Okay. And then she had said, I'll sign shorty over to you. All right, next slide. Okay, want to sign them over tomorrow. I can either write personal check or I can get go get money order. I'm not sure I have the cash on me. Can see if they'll let me withdraw that much. So do you keep that kind of cash at the barn with you? No, All right. I do not. All right, um, and her response? I'm bawling right now, Kira. My son ruined so many lives today. Okay, so is, do you have a timer? So it's kind of like they're trying to make the case there's, she's concerned about the money first and the victim second. I think that's kind of where they're going with this, but you, that's the legal part. Um, psychologically, Shannon's doing okay. Shannon's holding herself together. Um, there's no time on, on this. Do you see the time? There's no no time in those messages. The um the last time it shows where the sign. Okay, let's was. move on. Okay. Um, the next, her, she says, I'm bawling. My son ruined so many lives today. And the next slide. Um, then I so wish I could help you out more. I'm still in shock too. Take it one day at a time. Be honest about everything. It should help you guys through this. Um, and then you say, if you guys need anything and I'll do what I can for you and I'll take good care of the boys. Who are you talking about? I am talking about both of their horses. Okay. She responds. I know you will. And then your response? Try to rest some. You'll need it. We can talk more tomorrow about the boys. And she says what? Okay. Thanks for not judging. Unlike the whole world. Okay. Next slide. Um, I know you and James, and this doesn't even remotely make me think that it's your fault. It sounds like Ethan was a troubled kid. It's unfortunate this happened because he did ruin a lot of, um, and, and I, what's the end? Can you read the last few sentences? Uh, yeah, the last few sentences of that, um, that message says, who knows, try to stay calm as calm as and remember, uh, Jennifer deleted a lot of these text messages or these Facebook messenger messages too. That was established just uh, Friday in court.
They did have warnings. Uh, technically, they did have some warnings. And I think that's what Karen McDougall is going to be bringing up right now. Okay, we're going to put up on the screen um, a better copy so that you don't have to sort of guess what you said in between sentences. Um, so, um, one moment. Yeah, so like I say, day one was about the guns. Day two is about establishing uh, the shooter's mental health. Um, so we've been over this. This is at, we'll start at 10, uh, 45. Um, I'm, can you go to scroll down? Okay. All right. Can you read that full, um, message up from 1144, the night of the shooting that, that you, you wrote in blue? Uh, I'm concerned for you guys. You should stay where you are. I'm concerned for you even coming out here. I don't want people finding out about your horses or hurting you while you are here. Okay. And she responds. I have my pets at home. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I don't want to put anyone at risk. I don't know what to do. And you respond again, rereading this because there's a line missing. Go ahead. Best thing you can do is just be honest about things. I'm not sure. I'm wondering about even buying your horses, if that would drag me into this, or if you just sign them over to me, if that would be better for both of us. I could see people saying you're using money from the horses to get a better lawyer or something. People are ridiculous. Okay. And she responds, I'm selling. People entered this. Um, uh, it's going to cost everybody $200,000 and I don't think it will be questioned. You shouldn't get dragged in. And then again, you, you, we've read these texts. You said you don't have $5,000, uh, or that's the most you can afford to pay. Scrolling down. Um, she agrees to that and you, you tell her, you don't know if you can withdraw $5,000, correct? Correct. All right. All right, can you read that text again in the blue that you sent her now that it's complete? Um, I so wish I could help you out more. I am still in shock too. Take it one day at a time. Be honest about everything. It should help you guys through this. Please let me know if you guys need anything and I'll do what I can for you. I'll take good care of the boys. And she responds, I know you will. You say, try to get some rest. We can talk more tomorrow about the boys. And she says, okay, thanks for not judging us, unlike the whole world. So what time is this? This is now the next day at 12.28 a.m.? Yeah. All right. Um, and go ahead and read that entire text. That, that you're, So you're texting her into the early hours. Yeah. Correct? Okay, go ahead. Um, I know you and James and this doesn't even remotely make me think it's your fault. It sounds like Ethan was a troubled kid. It's unfortunate this happened because he did ruin a lot of lives around him and his own. Everything will work out how it's supposed to. I feel everything happened for a reason. Maybe this happened to raise awareness. Who knows? Try to stay calm and collective as you can. And then um, you had an amazing write on Billy. Yes. Okay. And how does Jennifer respond? I wish we had warnings, something. He's a good kid that made a terrible decision. I'm glad Billy good kills me to sell him. Um, okay. I, uh, did you know what she was talking about? Um, she was talking about um, not having Your more. Honor, I would object to this witness's opinion. The texts speak for themselves. I, I'm not asking her an opinion, Judge. I'm, I'm 
we can ask her if there's any other. The else. topic of the conversation? Yes. Um, did she, what I'm trying to ask, Judge, is did she have any context for, for this at, about warnings? Okay. She'd have Without to, saying what she'd have to have personal knowledge. Right. That's, I was trying to get to that. Um, did you have any um, information from before she sent you the text about warnings about, about what that would what that meant? Not just what you perceived it as, but did you have any information she had provided earlier about warnings? Um, just information of um, not really talking about about her her child much, and that he was. Okay. So you, you don't know. Other than the worksheet yeah. she she texted you, did you for that day did she say anything about warnings? No, she okay. did not. All right, and, and you respond. Um there probably were warnings, but nobody saw them. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. I absolutely adore Billy. Okay, and the next a lot of people have found out, I guess, he's in is all over Facebook. People at the barn are concerned. I think it would be best if you didn't come out to the barn, or if you do, just you must be escorted by the police. I'm really sorry. I'm looking out for my business here too. All right. And what were you? You testified earlier. You were worried about that's what. What were you worried about? Was there anything else that you were worried about at that point? Um, I was also worried about just. The, the safety of my other boarders. Um, I, I do have people that I give lessons to that do go to Oxford and um, they they did not want to be around if um, Jennifer and James would come to the farm. Okay, and she responds to you, this is then the next day after the shooting is around 9.56 a.m. What does she respond? Seriously, those horses are the only thing that is good in my life right now. And I responded with, I 100% understand that, but we all need to be careful. What if people follow you here? Okay, um, the next uh, messages indicate um, that it says Kira missed your call. Uh, is there a way to call through a Facebook Messenger that doesn't include that's not a cell phone call are those two different things if you know yes okay and do you had you received Facebook calls from Jennifer before she has attempted to call no okay. Facebook before and you didn't pick up I did not is there a reason for that I do not remember what I was doing at that time okay and the next uh, message call me on Facebook on track phone, need to talk and figure some things out. And what is your response? Sorry, I missed your call. I'm still doing some stuff and can't do a phone call until later on. And then you say, can you message me? Is, can, oh yeah. Communicate that way. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, next message. She says what? Uh, let's talk later, easier than texting. This phone is hard to text on. And now your response is now this is three o'clock, the day after the shooting, you respond to what? All right, no problem. I'll let you know later today. And then you text her again that night at eight, around 8 p.m. If you're comfortable coming out here without police, I'm okay with it too. We just need to be careful. I don't want yeah. people to follow you or hurt you. Okay, Kira, it, it, it seems as if you're changing your mind here and you're not exactly sure how to handle it. What's going on with that text? Because that's opposite of what you said earlier. Your Honor, I would object to the narrative being provided by the prosecution and ask that she just ask questions. Okay, well, I think, I think, she, I think she was. She's, she's asking, did you change your mind? I had changed my mind to allow her to come to the farm, but in my head, if she did decide to come to the farm, um, I would still have, um, like, you know, my parents were there and just making sure that things were still safe. Okay, and were you continuing to talk to other people like your parents during this time about what to do, or were you pretty set? I I had talked to my, my parents. Okay. Um, what is her response shortly after that? 
that's still 8, 12 p.m. Um, we're out of the area for a few days in a safe place until we have a better grasp on everything. Okay, and the next message you send? I am very glad you are safe. I care about you guys. I will take care of your boys. Let me know when you want me to buy them and I'll buy them. And then you also add, if you need anything else, could just let me know? Yes. All right. And the next message she sends is about an hour or so later at 9 p.m. And what did she say? I'm sorry, my keyboard sucks. Let's plan on Monday to sale. Okay. And at this time, December 1st would be a Wednesday. Yeah. If you know. I think. <laughs> I'm not good with dates. Okay. Uh, and so Monday is four or five days later. Yes. Okay. And then you respond, okay, sounds good. Is there a way for me to get the medication for his legs before then? Were you talking about Billy? I was talking about Billy. Okay. Because he had the medication that was being used to treat his mud fever. The mud fever? Yes. All right. And then the, she responds, um, what's your number? I want to call and set up a safe place to meet. My messenger is probably being monitored. And okay. She's telling you at 930 on Wednesday night, my messenger is probably being monitored. What did you take that to mean? What what messenger? Um, she is referring to the Facebook messenger. So you monitored meaning that the messages you're sending are being monitored. Correct. Did you know who was monitoring them? I did not. Okay. And then you she says what? Um she says, Hey, we need to get that stuff to you and discuss the horses. Okay, so this is the very this is the following day at 1249 uh, she says we need to get that stuff and discuss the horses and how do you respond um, my response <coughs> um, who's Truman Truman is our farrier that we use your what my our farrier okay we're Billy and Shorty having a farrier visit um yes okay and that was arranged by who uh, me, I, all the horses get done at the same time. Okay. So you say Truman's here right now. I can let you know when he's done. And you say, I'll message you. Ooh. Yes. Okay. She admitted and she was trying to avoid it. Uh, in conversation. Day, I'm sorry. Can we do call tomorrow morning? Okay. Were you trying to avoid a conversation or you were just busy? Both. Okay. <laughs> there. All right. Um, and the next message comes in. Uh, December 2nd, yep, can we still sell the horses tomorrow? Yeah. And you respond, this is at 10.56 p.m., you respond what? I think so, want me to have cash or check? And how does she respond? Cash is best. And you respond what? Um, what do you want to do with your cash? And what's tap? Um, like the saddles and bridles for the okay. horses. And you, she says, sell it. Yes. Okay. Now this is December third at seven nineteen a.m. Correct. Yeah. Is that what it says? That's um, that message. Okay. That's UTC minus five. So that is the actual time at seven nineteen a.m. And that is yes. December third. And you respond what? Um, I can probably give you 800 for it all if you want. Are you able to meet today still? Okay, and that is the, do you know if that was Friday? I do not remember. Okay, no worries. And uh, her response is what? Um, her response was maybe they're announcing charges at 12, so not sure what's happening. Okay, so that is, if I told you that was a Friday, do you have any reason to, to disagree with that? Um, December 3rd. I, I do not know the actual date that. Day okay, that so day. Uh, do you know what she's talking about? Charges? Did you have any clue as to what that was about? Just yes or no? Um, yes. Okay. From Jennifer or from another source? Um, news. Okay. And you respond, 
um, at 11 a.m. shortly, about 45 minutes after. Just let me know and we can figure something out. Do you have the papers for the boys? Is that like ownership papers? Uh, registration papers, because both of the horses are registered. And then you follow up saying what? Um, if you will take $5,800 for horses and all the tax and mm -hmm. stuff included, I'll go get the money um, today. So I have it ready when you are ready. Okay, and she responds, yes, and Brian will contact you. Papers are at my house. Um, Brian's a mutual friend that you both know. Uh, we both know him. Okay, um, that's that first closer okay. to him than I am. Thank you. And um, you respond, did you find a place for your other animals? Were you talking about her pets at home? Yes. Okay. Um, and she says, not yet. This is at 2 p.m. And then you respond, I can find them good homes with my family members if you want. And that's around 2 p.m. as well. Is that the last convers uh, message you sent or had exchanged with um, I do not know if that's the last time that I talked to her. Okay. You, did you give all of the messages um, on that day, the screenshots to law enforcement that you had? I did, yes. Okay. Um, where are the, what happened to the horses? Did, did she end up, did you buy them? Uh, I did not buy them. They were actually signed over to me. Um, part of our boarding contract is if payment um, is not made after a certain number of days or months, um, then the horses become the property of the facility to um, cover the cost of having them boarded. Okay. And you were making those arrangements with somebody else other than Jennifer? Jennifer's dad. Okay. Uh, nothing further at this time. Thank you. Good afternoon, or morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Shannon Smith. I represent Mrs. Crumley. I believe that I've met you once before uh, when you testified in court at the preliminary exam. Do you recall that? I do. If I ask you any questions that are at all confusing, can you please stop me and let me know? I will. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to start off by talking about your relationship with Jennifer Crumbly. You testified today that you had a business relationship with her. Is that correct? It was a business relationship, but also a friendship, but we were not super close friends. Okay, so you would agree that at the time Prior to November 30th of 2021, Jennifer Crumbly was also a friend to you. Not particularly close, but a friend. Correct. And the farm that you own, do you call it a farm or a barn? It's both. Okay. I keep using the word interchangeably, so I thought yep, I'd ask. Yep, either works. The property you own is approximately 51 acres, is that correct? Correct. And it's fair to say that to get to your property, there are long roads in a very rural area, is that correct? Yes. So you don't, your farm is not right up against uh, cities or areas with a lot of traffic, correct? Correct. On those roads, that are close to the farm, it's fair to say the cell signal cuts in and out um, for, for different cell phones. Correct. And you personally, at the time all of this took place, had a phone through Verizon Wireless, correct? Correct. And you would be able to use your Verizon phone while at the farm, for the most part, depending on the area and also just the day. So there were some parts of the farm or parts of the day where you would also have trouble getting a signal to make phone calls or send text messages, correct? Correct. And you know from the other people who board and come to the farm that other people also have internet issues and are unable to receive calls and texts while at the farm. Yes, sometimes people would struggle with that. It sounds like there's one little area by a picnic table where people kind of flock 
if they want to check their texts or get data. Is that correct? It very well could be. There are a couple areas that seem to maybe be a little bit more reliable service wise, but even then, like sometimes if it's too windy, things don't work. Now, you testified that um, Jennifer Crumbly gave you information that um, her son was weird, although she talked about vacations and some other things with him. Is that true? Correct. And you testified that You had concerns about her son um, prior to the events that unfolded on November 30th, correct? I have not voiced to her that um, I had seen concerns, but in my mind, I had thought that, you know, some of the things that she had described or um, how she didn't really talk about him much or if you know when she had um talked about him um it was very vague like um people like to talk about their their children and she did not talk about her just, um one moment and the some whatever's on the screen oh. is not an exhibit and so can i we, just can we do i just go ahead and turn this off it's a lot more should I just pull my phone out? I don't know. Is this yours? Yes. Yeah, this is my oh, okay. laptop. It oh. was. I didn't realize it was turned on to my laptop, so my desktop was evidently up there. Okay. So, um, Mrs. Or I'm sorry, Miss Penick, when you um, so you've testified obviously here today, but you recall testifying in a preliminary exam um, that took place back in 2022, correct? Yeah. And on the day you testified in 2022 at the preliminary exam, you did the same thing we saw here in court. You raised your right hand and swore to tell the truth, correct? Correct. And on that day, you did your best to take the stand and tell the truth about, about your knowledge of the information in this case. Correct. Now, on that day, when you testified, you were specifically asked... <coughs> Have you ever been given reason to believe he was not mentally sound, that he needed professional, you know, medical help? And your answer was no on that occasion. Correct? Correct. You were also asked, have you ever had reason to believe the shooter was homicidal or he would hurt other people? And your answer was no. Correct? Correct. Now, today you testified that the shooter, you were told about issues related to the shooter and him being weird. Yeah, she correct? just comes across as really angry, um, her body language. about that issue with the uh, preliminary exam. And but, you know, that the happens with the defense attorneys. It have, have to be that way. When you said uh, that... Objection, Your Honor, I, you're on page 55 of what? The preliminary exam. So the, um, the witness doesn't have that, and I think she, that's not... She doesn't have it. This is impeachment. Right, because she's referencing a page number to something that, that nobody else Oh, I has. think she's re referencing the page number so that you know where she is. Right. And, and, and okay, it, it's not an exhibit. So I'm just wondering if if we're going to refer to certain things that she said that that she'd be allowed to also see that before she answers. Well, I, I think she said, if she, if she doesn't remember, if she doesn't recall, right? Otherwise, with impeachment, I don't need to put the... Yeah, yeah, so ask her if she recalls being asked a certain question. Okay. Um, at the preliminary exam, um, you testified about whether James and Jen had issues with their son. Do you recall that? I recall. And on that day, you said, I had never gotten the feeling that Jen and James had those types of issues with their son, correct? Correct. I did in, not know if there were 
specific issues as they had never told me flat out that there were issues, but just some of their their behaviors that um, they or comments that they had made, indirect comments, um, made me think that there may have been issues at some point. So it's your testimony today that you thought there may have been issues, but when you were asked under oath and testified in 2022, you specifically said, I had never gotten the feeling that Jen and James had those types of issues with their son. This is why I agree with her argument. I don't have any paper proof or documentations of conversations to know for sure. So they're just like, I'm not an attorney. Okay. That's, I'm a mental I'm health not person. If you have documentations or proof, I am just saying that on that date in 2022, which was closer in time to the events in this case, your testimony, sworn testimony, was that James and John did not have those issues with their son, correct? Correct. Now, when the math drawing was sent over to you by Mrs. Crumbly, the math paper her son wrote on, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. You saw, you ultimately saw that math paper and you would agree with me that Jennifer appeared very concerned about what was going on, correct? She has stated that she was concerned. Okay. So she sends you the math paper and says, expresses concern. Yes. Now you testified that when you heard there was a shooting at Oxford High School, you knew who the shooter was, correct? My feeling with the information that I was given before I had actually seen it on the news of who the shooter actually was, I had my, my feelings about who the shooter was. So you, okay, you did not believe that the shooter would have committed a school shooting based on the math paper alone, correct? I do not know for sure. If you thought, if you saw that math paper and thought there would be a school shooting, you would have told someone, correct? I cannot predict the future that there would have been a shooting, but I was very concerned about the sheet, the math test that was sent to me. And I, I did talk to my parents about the, the math test that I was shown. And my understanding is that um, with Jennifer and James meeting with the school that this was discussed. Okay. We can agree that after the meeting about the math paper, Jennifer was concerned. We already went through that. Yes. Yes. We can agree that you, she sent you a picture of the math paper and you also felt concerned, correct? Correct. And we can agree that you did not call law enforcement or police to say, hey, I think a school shooting is going to unfold, correct? Correct. At the time you saw the math paper and were concerned, you would have stopped a school shooting if you predicted it was going to happen, correct? I would not have known that something like this would have happened. You wouldn't have thought something like this would happen, correct? Correct. What ended up happening was horrible, correct? Correct. And it was not anything that you expected even, correct? Correct. So when you are telling the jury that you hear about the shooting and you're thinking about the math paper, you know it's at Oxford High School, your testimony was you had an idea of who the shooter was, correct? Correct. In order to reach that conclusion at that time, you had to rely on hindsight, looking backwards at things that you believed supported Jennifer's son may be the shooter, correct? 
yes, the only thing that I, the thing that made me believe that I knew who the shooter was, was realizing the the math test that was sent to me that night. Right. So after the shooting happened, I I had a feeling of who the shooter was because of the math test that was sent to me that morning. Okay, so it's looking backwards, connecting the dots of things you see that were of concern and knowing the shooting happened, that helps you put it together who the shooter is. Correct. But, but again, if you saw that math paper and had known or had a crystal ball and knew the shooting was going to unfold, you would have certainly called the police or done something to stop it. Absolutely. You, you also would have said to Mrs. Crumbly, hey, I think your son is going to do something to hurt people, correct? Correct. Or, hey, I think your son might do something to hurt himself. Correct. And it's fair to say that you did not send Mrs. Crumbly messages along those lines. Correct. Now, you testified that you were being kind to Mrs. Crumbly. I don't believe you used the word being kind, but I, I characterize it as kind. When you said to her, I'm so sorry, you have to deal with this, uh, text messages along those lines that have been admitted, correct? Correct. And you are aware that Mrs. Crumbly from the text messages was saying she can't go home? Correct. And you were expressing concern for her. Hopefully my message, Rabbit, makes sense to you. Home. Correct. We can it, agree the math test a was revealed that same day of the shooting and the counseling session that you were aware and of. the shooting. Correct. Many people were very angry with the Crumbly parents when they knew the Crumbly parents were the parents of the shooter. Correct. So one of Mrs. Crumbly's concerns that was discussed in these texts um, with you were for her safety and the safety of her husband. Correct. And that poured over onto you as well. As the barn owner, you needed to be concerned about your affiliation with the Crumbleys. Correct. And you needed to be concerned to make sure that you were not specifically harmed by anyone for being affiliated with them, correct? I wanted to make sure that myself, my family, and my barn family were also safe. Well, that was going to be my next question. You were concerned about yourself, and I'm sorry, you said your family? My close family, and then also what we call a bar family or people that are boarded at my facility. Thank you. And that's why you made indications to Mrs. Crumbly um, about not coming to the barn or only coming with the police ex escort because you were watching out for what you needed to protect, which is yourself, the people you care about, and your boarders. When you write to Mrs. Crumbly in the text that were admitted, please stay safe. Um, you genuinely wanted Mrs. Crumbly to stay safe. Correct. And Mrs. Crumbly was explaining that she can't go home. Those texts speak for themselves. Correct. And Mrs. Crumbly ultimately says um, that they are, are staying out of town for a few days. Correct. And it's your understanding they were not they were not returning back to their home address. Correct. In the text, you say to Mrs. Crumbly, you give her some advice to be honest about everything, correct? Correct. At no point, there is no point where Mrs. Crumbly says to you, hey, I'm going to lie about this, correct? Correct. There's no point where she says, Kira, please take my side and lie about what anything, correct? Correct. When you're giving her the advice to tell the truth, she's not saying to you, I'm not planning to do that, right? Correct. And in your texts, you confirm to Mrs. Crumbly 
that you don't remotely think it's Jen and Jane's fault that the shooter did this, correct? I did put that in the text message, correct. And then Mrs. Crumbly responds that she wishes there had been warnings, correct? Correct. And when you text her back, you say there probably were, but nobody saw them, right? I did have that in my message, correct. And if you had seen warnings that the shooter would do something like he did, you certainly would have voiced that to Mrs. Crumbly. Your Honor, I believe she's been asked that question a couple times. Well, I guess, I guess she, I think she asked if you saw that uh, picture in April 74, did you call, call the police and said there's a mass shoot, there was gonna be a mass shooting, did I? I think the question is somewhat different. I believe she also asked her if you would have said something to Mrs. Crumbly on concern. Did, did she ask you that again? He, yes, a variation. I did ask that, but then further down in the text messages, the conversation shifts, and the conversation is specifically, again, about signs and warnings, and so that's why I'm asking this witness a question about it again, okay. only because it reappears. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So you never said to Jennifer Crumbly when you two were discussing the word warnings, hey, I think there were warnings, correct? Can you rephrase that? You did not say to Mrs. Crumbly when you guys were talking about her wishing there were warnings, you didn't say, Jennifer, there were warnings. I, that is correct because I, that's just my question. Okay. You did not say, Jennifer, there were warnings. Correct. And in fact, you continued to go on to be kind to Mrs. Crumbly and continue working out the terms of buying this course, correct? Correct. And you continued to be concerned and telling Mrs. Crumbly, uh, stay where you are, in that you didn't want people hurting them, correct? Correct. When Mrs. Crumley was commenting to you about a lawyer costing $200,000, um, you understood she was trying to gather money together to pay a lawyer, retain a lawyer. And at that point, the shooting by the shooter had taken place, correct? Correct. And you do not know who the lawyer was for that Mrs. Crumbly was going to be thinking about paying $200,000 to, correct? I did not know. There were originally two lawyers too, so that's gonna be $100,000 per lawyer. So uh, Shannon Smith is supposedly getting $100,000. So she's a retained lawyer. She's not a public, publicly assigned lawyer. May I have one moment, Your Honor? Sure. Um, Ms. Pennock, in light of your uh, testimony, I just want to confirm, you have never suspected that Jennifer Crumbly has stolen anything from you, correct? No. You never filed a police report or made that kind of claim to Mrs. Crumbly or anyone, correct? No. Thank you. Very good. Kira, did you have any trouble receiving and sending Facebook messages that day when you in the thread that I had you for you? Um, I do not remember. Okay, but you successfully communicated with her? Correct. Okay. Um, counsel asked you a couple times about text messages you sent Jennifer and you wanted to explain. You said, uh, that's what I wrote in the text. And he, what, what, what do you mean when you say that? Um, um, a lot of the messages that I had sent I wanted to send them in a way that I could possibly gain more information to provide to the law and um, get this situation taken care of. Okay. Do you, did you have any other concerns about being in a confrontation or a fight? Not 
directly with them. Okay. Um, and she just asked you about concerns about theft. Um, and you said, no, you didn't prior to this. So why were you concerned about it now? I was concerned because when um, somebody needs a lot of money and then they're in a tight spot um, with something like this case, that um, they may do things that they may not have ever. Okay. So I must say that day three of the trial uh, started out interesting. Um, the uh, defense attorney, uh, Shannon Smith, started by interrupting the judge as she did quite a bit on Friday. And uh, she started to apologize to the jury and to all the people in the audience and the victims about a remark that she made on Friday, day two of this trial. And the remark she made was when she was struggling with her PowerPoint, she said, oh my God, I think I'm gonna kill myself. And uh, nobody corrected her in the moment, uh, but afterwards, after all the jury had left and everything, the prosecutors said, I think that that kind of talk needs to stop in the future. And we all need to be mindful of, of saying those sorts of things when there are uh, victims and families in, in the courtroom. And the way Shannon reacted to that was just so outrageous. But anyway, today, Shannon apologized for uh, her her behavior. Uh, she she had apologized up and down. In fact, I think I'd made a comment on somebody's channel that um, uh, allegedly innocent. If you want to check out her channel, I think she did a whole <laughs> day's worth of live stream. I don't even know if that's up anymore. It was so long. I think that it might have gotten taken down because it was just too long. Um, I said I I said. I think that uh, Shannon Smith said, I'm sorry more times in a full day than I have said in my whole entire life, which, you know, I'm almost 59. So um, she, she kept apologizing for, for everything. But so she began today apologizing for that remark, which I didn't get because one, I mean, bringing up a beat, I think it's respectful that she did that. And at the other time, it's like, why bring it up again when it was something that could hurt the, ju the, the jury? And, and the jury was in the room when, when she said this. And, uh, and so were all of the victims and their families. It was just, oh my gosh. Um, it was, um, I felt like she was trying to push her limits, but it was interesting because I saw the prosecuting a ta uh, table has a male and a female. Jennifer McDonald is a female. I don't know who the guy is, but the guy went over to the judge as she was talking and apologizing as Shannon was apologizing. And, uh, and he went over there and then he came back. And then the judge immediately asked for a sidebar, which is as much as they can do in that courtroom. And I noticed after that, uh, Shannon's behavior became so much better than it was on Friday. So the judge either had to have told her something or I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, and then um, there was a point where the prosecution was going to bring up a bunch of stuff. So the first witness today was the lady who owned the horse barn where Jennifer Crumbly had her two horses stored and they had her as a witness for the prosecution. So in the, in and of that self, it's pretty significant because in, in my estimation, I thought that those two were pretty close friends. I, I know some horse people and uh, not just do they have a professional relationship, but there, there's a real personal interaction uh, with the person who owns a barn and who shelters your babies, you know, kind of like when you're taking them to a, a dog to a kennel. And uh, you're talking about stuff. Well, it went beyond that as far as the messages uh, went between her and Kira. Kira was the witness and she's the horse owner. Um, but immediately uh, the defense attorney, Shannon Smith, objected uh, to um, 
any kind of text messaging that could ever indicate that uh, Jennifer Crumbly said, and this is an actual text message, she just doesn't want it to be admitted to the jury. She didn't want it to be admitted to the jury, but she's saying it in front of the jury, which is, I think I'm gonna get drunk and ride my horse. So that was something that the defense, of course, didn't want to have brought out. But in bringing it out, isn't she bringing it out? And nobody brought it out before that. So I was completely confused as to why she would do that, why she would even bring it up. The prosecution wasn't even going there. And it hurt her defense, in my opinion. Now, I know I'm supposed to be doing psychological analysis and, you know, we're looking at behaviors, we're looking at like thinking, which there's a lot of thinking going on in those text messages and Facebook uh, instant messages and Instagram posts. There's a lot of thinking going on there. Behavior, thinking, you know, and, and, and feeling, you know, obviously there's a lot of feelings in this case because um, four people died and many were injured and lives were forever changed. So, Miss Kira, uh, I really did think that she kept it together as a witness. I was really happy that she wasn't on the stand as long as that, like the last witness was on Friday, who had all the forensic analysis of the data, the text messages, Facebook messages, instant messages, uh, Google searches, uh, Gmail accounts, all that stuff. He was on the stand all day uh, on Friday. And so, so Kira's up here, she's a horse stable owner. And on the day of the shooting, she receives a text message from Jennifer Crumbly, who is on tri trial here. Oh my gosh, all this stuff happens. I don't think I'm gonna be able to uh, come to my lesson tonight or my son's gonna have to come with me because there's this whole thing that happened at the counselor's office, which will come out because the counselor is the next person who takes the stand. And she tells Kira all this and she sends her a picture of this math paper. And you saw it on the live stream. She sent her the picture after she left the meeting with the counselor, which was maybe about 10 30, 10 45 in the morning, right? And the school shooting happened at 12 30, right? So it was like, you know, very, very little amount of time between when she sent this to Kira. And Kira had all kinds of suggestions. Oh my gosh, she seems maybe troubled and maybe some horse therapy could help and all this stuff. And she had seen the uh, math paper where, you know, the shooter had put all this stuff about guns and people are going to die and I need help and all this other stuff. All the stuff that you know, had the parents coming into the counselor's office in the first place, right? Uh, and uh, and so Kira saw that stuff. And um, so one of the things that really struck me was that Jennifer said, we didn't have any warnings. We didn't know. There were some warnings though, Jennifer, and we have that uh, as proof. Uh, we don't know what was done about the warnings. Uh, there was demons going around the house and stuff flying around the shelves and all that other stuff. And so there were warnings. You did think he was depressed in October. There were warnings, right? Um, but what Kira said was key here, I think, is, yeah, I think there were warnings, but there was probably nobody saw them. That made me think, well, okay, so Jennifer Crumbly is on the stand here for involuntary, four, four counts of involuntary manslaughter uh, because there were four kids who died that day. That's what she is up against. It could be child neglect charges that they go down to, whatever it is. Um, but I just thought that was interesting that Kira had said that um, because Jennifer Crumbly described her son's behaviors on that day. So as a chronology, the day of the shooting, Ethan gets dropped off to school. They find the math test. 
maybe around nine. He gets called into the counselor's office for that, right? Parents get called in, they get there 10, 10 30, they're out of there. It was only a 12 minute meeting. They talk about the drawing. They were offered the opportunity to either have um, the shooter return to school or uh, go home, but they did say within 48 hours he needed to have a counselor on board. Uh, to their knowledge, no uh, phone calls were made to any counselors and the parents allowed the shooter to go back into school and nobody in the office bothered to check his backpack. And I don't, and the counselor who um, was interviewing them didn't think to ask the shooter if he has access to a gun and the parents did not offer that information. So there were so many pieces that were, were left out. And I think that's why the defense has a really valid case here is because um, we can't properly predict when these things are gonna happen. We can put together pieces or we can be really super paranoid and call the police about everything. Um, but there's no way uh, we can predict that a school shooting was gonna happen because of this. But if everybody had actually fully disclosed uh, the, the truth of what was going on, like say, for instance, in the counseling office, the mother had said, oh, well, we just bought our son a nine millimeter, the six hour uh, on Friday and it's Tuesday and uh, oh my gosh, you know, um, yeah, this could be a concern. If anybody had bothered to check his backpack to see if the gun was there. Um, in Michigan, you're not required to lock up a gun in, in uh, it, you know, from, so there, it's accessible uh, to to children. Um, unfortunately, I think um, uh, that is their law right there. Um, so I think that law is probably going to change uh, if it already hasn't. But at the time, it was not required that they do that. So none of that stuff was revealed to the counselor, who probably would have said, hey, do you mind me searching my, your backpack? It could have been averted at that time. But you know, there was a bunch of things that could have prevented it. But that math test that Kira saw, the defense came right back and said, listen, you see that math test? Would you have called the police about that? Kira says, no. You know why? Because it wasn't a an eminent concern. You draw a picture, it doesn't mean you do anything. But when you put together a picture, a mental health sort of challenge, and access to a weapon, that's when school sh shootings start. That's when murder starts. And when people pick up on those three things and possibly even more like manifestos or journals or, you know, these signs, um, that's when you need to start reporting stuff. And even if it makes you seem overly paranoid, I think it's really important that you report this stuff and uh, to avoid it's better to be overly safe. Please don't be paranoid. But if you have enough evidence to think, okay, he's depressed. He's lost his best friend. He's lost his dog. He's starting to act weird. He's seeing demons flying off the shelf, uh, <laughs> whatever he was seeing. And they were. he was given a gun, which he had full access to. And he wrote this thing on his math paper. Uh, I, for me, I would have called 911. I, I would have had to if I was a counselor. I would have had to call 911 to keep the public and him safe. Um, now, I understand that Kira is not a mandated reporter like I am, and I get that, but they ended up calling, her and her parents ended up calling the sheriff's office and reporting something, you know, some sort of concern. And the interesting thing was, is that as soon as Kira found out so she had already received the copy of the math test. As soon as she found out that there had been a shooting in Oxford, she connected the two. And so did James Crumbly, the dad. And you know what the dad did? The dad was a DoorDash driver. He got right in his car and he booked it home. And you know why? Because he wanted to see if that Sig Sauer was there. And once he found out that the Sig was not there, he immediately called 911. And um, 
somehow I don't know if that'll save his trial. He's got a separate trial than Jennifer. It's coming up in February, but he called 911 and um, I think that does matter. He let them know he wanted to help, right? So we're looking at think, thinking, behaving, and um, and feeling. Uh, today's trial was, well, I only made it through one witness because I had to go and do a, a, a consultation appointment. Um, but I am looking forward to hearing the school counselor talk uh, about uh, his thinking. I have also heard his testimony, uh, I think on the uh, the other, I think five months ago, uh, they had a, a hearing, a Miller, Miller hearing with uh, the shooter where he uh, was ultimately, he pled, pled guilty to, to the crime and now he's gonna be doing life in prison. Uh, he will be appealing though, probably uh, the parole part. So dad called 911. And the other thing I would like to say is, um, I didn't. Know, I don't know if Kira knew that the shooter had access to a gun, but just think about it. The thing I have to think about with Kira is that if she had known he had a gun, would it have turned out differently? Like, would she have called nine one one? That actually rhymes. So it's not just the math test. It's not just knowing that the shooter was having mental problems, right? But if she knew that he had access to a gun as well, free access to a gun, would she have called the authorities? I don't know. It's it's really strange. She says she's not a friend to Jennifer Crumpley, but their text messages did indicate to me that they seem pretty friendly. Um, so there's that. Um, and then they're, they're going to go into this in the rest of the trial, but I just need to go on record as saying that um, after the dad called 911, uh, both parents did end up going to the police station and uh, they were instructed to come back for a court date. I believe it was on December 4th. And in the meantime, they felt so unsafe that they couldn't even go back to their homes. And so they stayed in a hotel or maybe a hotel the second night, but they were hiding out, but they did miss the court court date or were right near it or whatever when the police found them and, uh, and took them into custody. And they've never seen their home. They've never seen their animals. They've never seen their son ever since. And that was in December of early December of 2021. And so when you think about behaviors, the dad behaved in a very responsible way by calling 911. Both the parents behaved responsibly by showing up at the police station. Um, they handed over their phones. They had seven phones. Um, everything was handed over. Um, I don't know if they were planning on running away or not. Um, we're going to hear Jennifer Crumbly testify and people are going to ask her some questions. And I do have a feeling that Karen McDonald is not going to be as kind to her um, because she's, she's really not. Um, I mean, she's really not a fan of Jennifer Crumpley, which may be a problem. That might be where we get Karen McDonald a little bit more emotional, uh, but I think she'll keep keep it together. What I was really impressed with though is Shannon Smith today. She made some great defense arguments and she kept her cool. So what I thought was either and or the judge had talked to her about her behavior on uh, Friday and, or sorry, and this Monday morning when she apologized and the jury was in the room, she must have gotten severely reprimanded and or her attorney uh, colleagues had contacted her during the weekend and sort of coached her through how she should act in a court setting in a, such a high profile case as this. Isn't this juicy? Okay, so that's what I had wanted to say. If you watch the live stream version of this, you'll, you'll get to see the chat, uh, but you will not hear all of the stuff at the end because apparently my microphone uh, was doing this crazy stuff and I was hearing double the whole time. So the whole time I was online, I was hearing this like delay. And uh, so I'm not sure what was going on with my sound, but I'm just going to make this into a video for y'all to watch. And I hope you have a good day. Um, and again, uh, to the victims, I'm going to read their names out.
for right now. Uh, Madison Baldwin, age 17. Uh, Tate Meyer, age 16. Hannah St. Juliana, age 14. And uh, Justin Schilling, 17. They all died on that day. God bless them uh, and their families. And let's let's do what we can to prevent uh, this from happening again and help school be a safe place for our children. Thank you so much and take care. Faces twist in pain A stupid alibi Might just clear the guy who Rides a crazy train This world's gone crazy Things are spinning round and round Well, someday, maybe We'll calm our chaos down child is gone, last seen on the lawn of the second street in Maine. Mom cut all the ties with all those stupid guys, but it was all in vain. This world's gone crazy, things are spinning round. Well, someday, maybe, we'll calm our chaos down. Someone lost control while he was on parole. He drove through that parade. Family start to cry, seeing him on trial and acting so insane. This world's gone crazy. Things are spinning round and round Well, someday, maybe We'll calm our chaos down Four kids in Idaho White car on the go And the internet explodes Cop and sleuths and clowns and suits and they all think they know this world's gone crazy things are spinning round and round well someday maybe we'll 